Over the past few years, the general public has become increasingly educated about the transgender community due to TV stars like Laverne Cox and Caitlyn Jenner talking openly about their experiences. Although the public is captivated by their stories, the arduous process that goes into a full transformation remains largely unknown. Joining us today is world-renowned facial plastic surgeon, Dr. Jeffrey Spiegel, whose specialty, facial feminization surgery, is changing the landscape for the transgender community. Thank you for joining us today, Dr. Spiegel. Oh, it's my pleasure. Thank you for having me. Now, you were recently named one of the top 15 influencers in plastic surgery, and you're considered a pioneer in the fields of facial plastic and reconstructive surgery, specifically for transgender patients. So tell us a little bit more about your background and your work in developing procedures for facial feminization. Sure, well I trained in head and neck surgery and facial plastic surgery and had an extensive experience in working with reconstructing the face, reconstructing the jaw, the skull, the nose, the cheeks, all of that and doing aesthetic cosmetic surgery. And over time I started thinking about what is it that allows a face to look and be seen a certain way. In other words, when you see a person's face, you immediately know if they're attractive or not. You immediately know if they're a man or a woman. You immediately know if they're young or old. You can get an idea of their ethnicity. All sorts of information is available to you. But how do we do that? Once I started thinking about the various factors that convey those messages, it really revolutionized the way I think about things. Now, before we get into the procedures involved in facial feminization surgery, are there any key features that make a face feminine, or does it vary from person to person? Well, things do vary from person to person. When I look at a face, I don't use the traditional method that plastic surgeons are taught of thinking about angles and measurements. I think about specific evolutionary traits that are making a face look feminine. For example, people don't realize this, but one of the most important areas is the forehead. The shape of the eyebrows and the shape of the forehead bone around your eyes really influences the way you're seen. So what exactly is facial feminization surgery and what procedures are involved for the typical patient transitioning from male to female? So facial feminization surgery takes any features of the face that are sending an unattractive, an older, or a masculine message to the brain. And it switches them to one that sends the opposite, a younger, attractive, feminine face. And what's really interesting is this works for everybody. So people who are transitioning from male to female, it's of course very effective for, but any woman who wants to look more attractive or any man who wants to look less harsh can benefit from this. Some of the specific procedures involve thinking about the face on various levels. So for example, first we'll think about the bony structure of the face. We'll think about what is the shape of the bone around the eyes, of the forehead, of the cheeks, of the chin and the jaw. And I'll adjust all of those bones. You know, I know this sounds very invasive and, and uh, pretty awful, but it's really very safe and has a fairly quick recovery. So after we've adjusted all the bones of the face, then we think about making the soft tissue, the nose, the cheeks, the lips, all of those look more attractive. And there are specific things I'm thinking about in regards to shadowing. We think a lot about light. It turns out our brains are really attuned to how light reflects on the face. Now, if you think about cosmetics, when you use cosmetics, you're trying to brighten your eyes, reflect light off your cheeks, and I do the same. So I might fill in the cheek in this area. Now women will often have very full cheeks to the side and start to lose volume in the front. So we'll restore volume in the front where light will then bounce into the eye. Similarly, when I set the eyebrows back towards the face, I'm allowing more light to reach the eyes, which makes the eyes larger and brighter and sends a message of attractive female face. How do you sort of curb people's expectations when they come in? Having reasonable expectations is very important. And what I'll do is I'll talk to people and say, you know, based on where you're starting from, we should discuss what your goals should be. Now, women come in all shapes and sizes, and there are women that we sort of all find to be extremely beautiful, and others who we find to be a little less attractive, but we still know that they're women. So if, if a very masculine looking person comes in, we might say, well, I think I can help you to look feminine, but you may not look like a supermodel. <laughs> if somebody comes in who's you know, a little more attractive as a man, then perhaps we will end up looking like a, a TV star or supermodel or a TV show host. Now, when transgender individuals share their stories, they many times mention that they've 
are identified as the opposite gender from a very early age. Now this obviously brings up the question of timing. So are these procedures more successful when they're done at an earlier age, or should people wait till a certain point of development? Well, certainly you want to do this once you're certain about who you are. So people who are transgender recognize this from a very early age, but it takes some time for them to come to grips with it and to understand the, the way we manage it and to figure out the timing of doing these things. So certainly people in general don't see me until they're at least older teens, but I see people in their 60s, 70s, all ages, because people have the, uh, different needs as far as when they want to do these procedures. What is the most popular procedure that patients request when it comes to facial feminization surgery, not just limited to transgender patients? You know, that's a great question. And what's really interesting is people who come to see me are often not looking for a specific procedure. If you go to a plastic surgeon in New York or Los Angeles or Las Vegas, you might say, I want my nose done or I want bigger lips. People who come to see me say, I just want to look stunning. I just want to look the best I can. What are we doing? And they're coming really for the opinion as much as for the unique procedures that I do. And so for each person it's different and we'll look at each face and decide this is exactly the minimal number of procedures you need to look exactly the way you want. So there's no one procedure that you do very, very frequently? You know, it's funny as I'm so busy I do all of them very frequently. <laughs> Now, I'm hesitant to even bring this topic up because sometimes I do get criticized for my voice being a little bit high-pitched, but beyond cosmetic procedures, you do also offer voice feminization surgery. So who is a good candidate for this procedure and what is involved? So, well, I like your voice, but a voice feminization procedure involves raising the pitch of the voice. Some people, whether they're transgender or women who just have a deeper voice, don't like being misgendered or people saying thank you sir over the telephone you know when you can't see the person and get all the the cues about who they are so I'm able to go through your mouth there's no cutting no scars and we can do some special stitching and use a laser on your vocal cords which will make the pitch elevate so it's really good for anybody who wants to raise their pitch a bit what is the recovery time on a procedure like this so this one has a mixed recovery when what I mean by that is it's painless it's not uncomfortable, you don't feel uh, scratchy, itchy, sore, but you can't speak for two weeks. Wow. So truly for about two weeks you have to be completely silent. It's a good time to get all your texting done. A lot of spouses, I'm assuming, request this procedure. The spouses love it. Right? <laughs> all right, so we have a couple of before and after pictures of patients who have undergone facial feminization surgery, and I was hoping you could sort of walk us through the different procedures that you performed. Sure. Okay. Okay. Well, the person on your left, as you can see, looks unequivocally masculine. And this person was very kind and sent me the, uh, a photo afterwards wearing the very same shirt and necklace to sort of make the photos look very similar. And you can see what's interesting is how the, the person has transformed. If you look at the face on the right, no one would mistake this person for anything other than a beautiful woman. And that's really where our surgery comes in. So, well, first of all, you can imagine if you started off looking more feminine than the person on the left, how beautiful you can look. But the things we've done here, I've raised and arched and shaped the eyebrows. I've brought the hairline forward. You can't see that, but men tend to have sort of a typical hairline pattern where the uh, corners of the hair is uh, recessed a bit. I've set the forehead back. The ridge that a man often has over the eyes that hides the light is gone thus making the eyes change from on the left sort of narrow to on the right very, very large and attractive. I've filled in the cheeks. I've done a significant change to the nose. You can see this person's nose was very wide and strong before and afterwards uh, it's more tapered and narrow. I've shortened the lips. When, the, uh, when a, a young or attractive woman opens her mouth you typically see some of her upper teeth and for men and older women that starts to go away. So lifting the lip and changing the light reflection is an important part of what I do. I've also gotten rid of the Adam's apple and I've tapered the jaw, sort of a V-line surgery of the jaw, which is a popular operation in Asia these days. Now when you say that you sort of arched the eyebrows, you did that by lifting it, not just by waxing. I just want to make a clarification. Correct. You know, that was <laughs> surgically changed, so they're going to stay there. Well, similarly here, if you look at the person on the left, they're wearing earrings but it's a masculine looking face. And afterwards, without, being, without it being obvious what we've done, I've changed a lot and it changes your perception. 
So once again, I've raised the eyebrows. I've brought the hairline forward and shortened the forehead. I've greatly changed the nose. This person had a very wide nose before. We've made it more refined and delicate without looking artificial. I've changed the mouth. The person's not smiling in either photo, but on the photo on the right afterwards, their mouth is more attractive. It almost looks like they're smiling because we've slightly turned up the corners of the mouth. And this is pretty early on again, so we've tapered the jaw, but it will keep getting better. Here's a little more of a dramatic change to the jawline. This person really wanted to narrow their chin, and you can see that we've been able to do that in a very natural, tapered way. You can also see that the lip is shorter, so when she smiles, we see a lot of teeth, and in fact, when the mouth is open, we see a lot of teeth. And when you say the lip is shorter, you mean the distance between the nose and the top of the lip? Exactly right. Fuller lips are what most plastic surgeons offer. You know, they'll inject your lips with fat mm -hmm. or fillers, and we do that as well. But for many people, the issue really isn't the fullness of the lip, it's the height from the nose to the lip, and that's why some people look artificial when they've had uh, lip injections done. So we've filled in the cheeks, we've changed the nose, I've again set back the forehead. You can see that white light on the picture on the left across the forehead, which uh, represents where a flash reflected off the bony ridge is missing now on the right. So men have a brow ridge that sort of protrudes out here, and women it's flat? Precisely. Precisely right. Is it just the shape of the hairline that makes it more feminine, or is it the fact that it's lower? It's the combination of the two. And if you look also, again, I think this is a very dramatic change in the size of the eyes. If you look at the eyes on the left, they're narrow, they're small, even though this person is raising the eyebrows. And if you look at on the person afterwards, her eyes are large and attractive. 